But the markets, uh, well, the Nifty at the low point of the day uh, for all practical purposes. Uh, Ashwini Gujarat, Mitesh Thakkar with us, and in a bit we'll get Sandeep Bagle as well. Uh, Ashwini, uh, you took, took the long at open. Is, is that a trade that you're carrying? And what would be the stop loss for that trade? And uh, what are your stock calls now? See, the long trade has been uh, taken out, and uh, which has ended at a profit since it was taken yesterday. Now, the issue is that you are not getting great follow through even on financials. And, uh, you know, basically, rupee sensitives are going to the cleaners. So that way, uh, you know, you have uh, the day's high fairly close by about 26,050, 26,000 thereabouts. I think uh, short trades can be taken because uh, this isn't very great, great response to good news. So if, uh, you know, uh, IT starts to fall further, then there could be a bit of a problem. So for the moment, we are short on Bank Nifty and uh, basically 100 point type of stop. We shouldn't go back to new highs. Having said that, uh, I think uh, uh, IT is looking like having a fairly bad day. So NIT Tech is a sell with a stop of 1150, target of uh, 1100. Infosys is a sell with a stop of 660, target of 635. And Hint Petro, uh, you know, you can still buy with a stop of 248, target of 263. Okay, so uh, Ashwin, is your uh, expansion theory now out of the window in that case? Because you were making this point that the market is going to expand and that's why you were taking longs. Well, it's not expanding, so that means uh, the market may reverse because uh, you are at the higher end of the range, almost touching 200 DMA on Bank Nifty, which was about 26,000. So obviously, if there's no follow through, the trade is out. Okay. All right. <clears throat> uh, Sandeep uh, Vagli is also with us. Uh, what are you trading now, Sandeep? Good morning, Lata. I would go with a buy in a Chennai Petro, stop loss of 280, target 306 and a sell in a HCL tech, stop loss 1030, target 1002. Okay, okay well, that's uh, one buy and one sell. Uh, Mitesh Thakkar with us. Uh, uh, good morning again, Mitesh. What would you trade? Yeah, good morning, Lata. Uh, uh, I have two buy calls. Uh, one of them is a conditional buy. It's a buy on Maruti and I'm waiting for the stock to break above the 73, 10, 15 range. It kind of had a high close to that and stapled up a bit. But if during the day 7315 cross buy, Keep a stop then at 70 to 85 and look for targets of around 7400. And the second call is IOC. That's a buy with a stop at uh, 148. Uh, look for targets of around 160. Yeah. All right, okay. uh, gentlemen, thanks a lot for those trades. Uh, the market is now in the red. The Nifty is down about 12 points and the Bank Nifty is only up about 76 points. The mid cap's also falling. And this is where that uh, you know the whole risk reward equation comes in. This is the point we're making. There's no you know, uh, value in chasing this market at the open. Absolutely no point taking long set open itself uh, after yesterday's big rally. The context was, of course, important. Absolutely. And, you know, a lot of uh, stocks are getting punished post their numbers. Ashok Leyland, uh, of course, post that resignation. Sun Pharma is now down almost about 5-odd percent. And one more stock in focus is Glenmark Pharma. The stock opened higher but continued heading lower through the morning. The management held a conference call earlier where they have detailed that four products in the complex generic pipeline have been discontinued. Though they are quite hopeful of the coming quarters. Glenn Saldana, the chairman and MD of Glenmark, joins us now to talk about that. Um, uh, Glenn, hi. Uh, good morning and thanks for joining in. I think, you know, it's the discontinuation of these four drugs which has taken uh, the market uh, by a bit of a surprise. But nevertheless, um, can you tell us what the general texture has been in the U.S. Uh, markets? Because we're getting a sense that the pricing pressure has reduced. But uh, how do you see the next, say, three to six months play out? Well, I think the U.S. market, uh, you know, continues to witness uh, a big, uh, a huge changing dynamic. I mean, the pricing pressure, uh, while it has reduced on the existing products, I think a lot of the new products, uh, you know, approvals uh, continue to remain challenging. And, and uh, with the number of players targeting the same product, uh, the competitive landscape is constantly changing. Uh, but all in all, I think the U.S., you know, we've grown the business quarter over quarter and, uh, you know, we're expecting a good Q3 and Q4. We're expecting some strong approvals in Q3 and Q4. So I think uh, you should see a better U.S. generics business, at least in the next two quarters, uh, for the overall business. Okay. Uh, Glenn, uh, good morning. Thanks for joining. 
Well, uh, you in the conference call indicated that uh, India should do well this year and next. What uh, can you give us some nuances of how it performed in the half year gone by and the early trends for the current quarter? Sure. In India, we are currently among the fastest growing companies, among the top 15 companies in India. If you see, you know, we've constantly, uh, as per IMS, uh, we've constantly been number one, number two in India. And the trend still continues. So we, we see a very strong India business. Uh, I think what's exciting is we have some excellent product launches coming through in India, uh, particularly in the diabetes segment and in the respiratory segment. So. Uh, we think these will be major growth drivers for us over the next 12 to 18 months for India. Mm -hmm. And okay. what does it form as a part of your total revenues? So India is roughly around 30% of total revenues. Okay. Uh, you know, just coming back one query on the U.S. business, you did mention that the Q3 U.S. business should be better than Q2. In Q2, you saw about an, a 12% growth in the U.S. business. So what are we looking at in the second half of the year? Is it going to be, you know, 15% plus or could you do better than that? Well, I, I can't give you a specific number, but, uh, you know, we got an approval which is estradal towards the end of Q2, so that will really play out in Q3. Uh, so I think Q over Q, you should see growth. In addition, we have these two uh, product launches coming through in between now and the end of this year, where we could be the, you know, the first generic or 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 soul, which we think could drive uh, the rest of the year. So I think all in all, it should be a strong year. Okay, can you give us more color on your out licensing opportunities? I mean, there is a nasal spray, there is an oncology drug, there are derma drugs. So uh, whatever you can see in terms of visibility. Sure. So, uh, you know, our core uh, uh, product, you know, Rialtris, which is our respiratory product, uh, we did a deal in Australia. We are looking at further licensing deals in China and some of the other markets. In addition, uh, we did a deal with Harbor Biomed on our oncology product, GBR1302. You should see additional deal flow, both uh, some of the regional deals uh, like Chinese rights and various market rights, as well as uh, some global deals over the next 12 to 18 months on the innovation uh, products that we are pursuing as a company. Mm -hmm. You have this, you know, these four drugs that you discontinued. Uh, what impact will it have on sales? And what is the opportunity advantage? Uh, because you will be liberating some of your sales force and some of your workforce from those drugs. Well, on sales, it'll have no impact at all. These are all development products. And okay. what we've done is we've reallocated the capital into other projects for development. Okay. So uh, the only impact it has is a, is a potential write down of the money we've spent on these four projects. Okay. Uh, but I think uh, if you look at uh, the, the pipeline for the US continues to remain very strong. Um, I think periodically we'll keep on re-looking at our pipeline and, and reallocating spends as part of um, as part of how we do things, uh, depending on the external environment and the um, and and the the development timeline. So what is the I think the pipeline continues to look strong. Okay, sorry. What is the write-down amount likely? Well, we took a write down in the quarter of I think 150 crores or somewhere thereabouts, right? Um, on um, on the in the PNL. Okay. Have you on the API business? Have you managed to initiate talks with PE investors uh, to get any funds in and anything that we can expect uh, in the first half of the calendar year 2019? Well, we have current uh, discussions uh, with uh, strategic investors to uh, uh, on a minority stake, and that's we publicly announced that. Uh, I mean, those discussions continue to progress well, and we are hoping to close something in the near future. Okay, so when you say near future, uh, how long do you think it could take? I mean, in the next calendar year, you think? I I can't give you any time frame. <laughs> Oh, All right, sure. Glenn, we leave it there today. Thanks a lot for joining us. 2.5% lower on Glenmark. Uh, i tell you something, HDFC Bank is now beginning to bat for the bulls, so uh, making the highs of the day. Interesting because the market gave you that perhaps intraday dip, and uh, you know it's, it won't be surprising if uh, HDFC mm -hmm. Bank now leads the market and perhaps, uh, you know... Uh, I mean, no, it's quite a giant. It can exactly. carry a bank nifty and you know on that, its that, shoulders. That crude tailwind is there, the rupee tailwind is there for the market, especially for the bank nifty. So I think from the lows, we are already beginning to see a bit of a move. 
on the Nifty Bank, uh, led by HDFC Bank, and I think even ICICI Bank. So it it could be interesting because so buying the, the dips has worked, and uh, the markets gave you a bit of a dip intraday. So in fact, even the Nifty is about to turn into the green. Uh, what the market may have done is the market may have uh, just taken out some some weak longs, and now perhaps uh, you know starting to see a bit of a move once again. That could happen today because from the red. There's a bit of a swift recovery which is on, and don't lose sight of the bank Nifty. To tomorrow is the weekly options expiry. Ahead of that, normally you see a move on Wednesday, and the way HDFC Bank is uh, shaping up, uh, I think it it really could get interesting, and it could force some short covering. In fact, if uh, you know the market does uh, take out the uh, first hour high. A ten basis point fall in yields is seminal, uh, yeah. and the architect of that fall is going to join us very soon, Manisha Gupta, in the <laughs> early commodity <laughs> trades in just a minute.